Good evening, I'm Duke Rood, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Nebraska baseball team is getting ready to start their season this weekend at Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. The Huskers will face Baylor on Friday, Texas Tech on Saturday, and Oklahoma on Sunday as a part of the Shriners Children's College Showdown. Head coach Will Bolt had a press conference today where he announced the starting pitchers for this weekend's slate. Yep, we'll go, uh, we'll go Sears on Friday, uh, we'll go uh, Walsh on Saturday, uh, and then we'll go Caleb Clark on Sunday. Nebraska softball player Jordy Ball announced today that she suffered an ACL injury and will miss the rest of the 2024 season. The injury occurred in the third inning of the opening game of the year against Washington. Jazz Shelley was named AP National College Women's Basketball Player of the Week after scoring 23 points in Nebraska's win against number two Iowa. Shelley is the first Husker to win this award in school history. Nebraska wrestler Ridge Lovett won NCAA Wrestler of the Week for the first time in his career. This comes after Lovett defeated number six Austin Gomez of Michigan 11 to four to improve to 20 and 0 on the year. Two games in the Big Ten tonight, Michigan at number 14 Illinois and number 20 Wisconsin hosting Ohio State. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 1 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key, you betcha! Natalie Potts, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week with a triple. Getting a hand on it with Jawan Gary, Wilcher scoops it up, now to Williams across the timeline, Williams to the trailing, Wilcher fumbled it, got it back, drives to the baseline, 15-footer up, got it, got it, got it, got it! We got a tie ball game! Eight on the shot clock, Gary and White, right wing, needs help, high lob underneath, Markowski gets a double team, kicks to the deep left corner, Moriarty with two, with one, her three-pointer, it's back rim, it goes in, you betcha, Kendall Moriarty with a triple. Huge shot, the pump fake by Mass, step back three on the way, got it, got it, got it, got it, holy smokes, holy cow, the Flying Dutchman with a big three to tie it at 65. Here are your hosts. Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. We're here Tuesday night, full two-hour show coming your way here on Sports Island. So glad you've been able to spend a few minutes with us here tonight. We're grateful and honored to have you listening in or watching in if you're on our YouTube stream for the program tonight. Some really tough news today for Husker Sports with the announcement by Jordy Ball, the outstanding pitcher who transferred from Oklahoma back to her home state to play for the Cornhuskers. She put out a social post right after noon today saying, in game one of opening weekend in Puerto Vallarta, I experienced an injury to my ACL that is going to cause me to support the red team in a different way than anticipated for the 2024 season. What a heart, with a heart thankful for God's plan and timing. I will be redshirting this year and looking forward to a season of growth and learning from a different point of view. I'm thankful for the support of my family, friends, coaches, and staff. Truly blessed to have so many wonderful and loving people in my life. I'm not going anywhere. See you in 2025. Go Big Red. You talk about a blow. My goodness, this one lands on you like a big rock dropping on your head. When I saw the video, I first thought, ah, it doesn't look so bad, but that's, you, and you've had two of them, ACL tears. Sometimes that's the way they are. They, you just don't even maybe think it's that bad, and it is. Yeah, it's a lot of times it's the most concerning when they can get up and walk, and it doesn't look bad. Usually, um, if that's the case, those ACLs, I mean, we see it in football all the time. A lot of times when they get up and walk off and there's not a lot of pain, it just, you know, it, it kind of concerns you on, on how bad it is. And absolutely devastating. There's so much excitement and momentum for this team this year with Jordy. When you add a arguably the best pitcher in the country to already a really, really good lineup that has done some really good things over the last couple of seasons. But, you know, don't, don't, um, if you're, you're a fan of this program and, and Jordy would be the first to tell you, don't say, oh, I'll just wait till next year. This is a, still a good softball team. And they were a good softball team that added a really elite pitcher. And that's why they started getting the, you know, the, the national attention 
but they can hit. We've seen that. Billy Andrews is chasing a home run record, the program home, home run record. They've got a really deep lineup. They've added some pitching. Kaylin Kenny is back this year. So, you know, it's still going to be a softball team that I think they'll say, hey, we still got – we're not going to hang it up, you know, by any means. They're still going to fight. And so, um, you know, you hate it for Jordy, but Jordy has also proven she had the injury her freshman year that limited her. That was um, an issue that she had to come back from. She proved that she can come back and be even better from injuries. We saw it between the freshman and sophomore year. There's no doubt in my mind she will come back better for this. And hey, you know, on the bright side, she's still got two more years left of eligibility. She can redshirt and I use this as a medical red shirt. And a lot of times that is, it really does, it makes athletes better when they have to take this year and, and sit back and reflect. And I, I just watching her from the sideline, you have to probably imagine, you kind of have a feeling probably that what it is, but she's still suited up. And even despite probably knowing, hey, this, this very well could potentially could maybe sideline me for the year, maybe for a while, but she still was, um, you know, right there in the huddles, encouraging the, the other pitchers, the team. And so, you know, she's going to be a, as big a part, however big a part she can be, it's just going to be in a different role this move this season. So, you know, she'll be the first to tell you, still, still get behind there and, and support the softball team because it's still a good softball team and they still have a chance to really do some, some big things in the Big Ten. Second kind of major injury for that program, Abby Squire, you know, is out for the year as well, but she would be back next year as well, so that's two. And, you know, we had Nate Rohr on the program Friday night after they had played three games, and he said, you know, Jordy even warmed up on Friday. He goes, she's out there in uniform and warming up, and you're kind of going, I think she's going to be fine. So you, I just did not see this coming today uh, the way it happened. So that's just what a, what a gut punch it was. But she has got such a great personality and a great outlook on life. She will, she will prevail over this moving forward. And, and now you just, you know, that's the coach's responsibility now to keep that team's dauber up. I mean, they got to keep, you know, get their, because I'm sure there's, I'm sure it was a tough, tough time in the locker room today when that news spread through the locker room that she was out for the year. But now, now you got to, you got to, as an athlete and a competitor, you got to shake it off and go, hey, we got, we just barely began our season. We got a long way to go. Let's go get it now. Yeah, and, and you like the way that they responded, um, you know, after the initial injury. It had to be a shock, and then they did. They bounced back, and they had two big wins on, you know, to close out the Puerto Vallarta um, challenge. And so, look, this – I'm not taking anything away from Jordy. Jordy is – there. we've said it time and time again, this is a program changer. This is a game changer. This – when you have a pitcher like this, it just comes along, you know, we, as we saw what she's done already in college. It's just a once-in-a-lifetime kind of pitcher a lot of times. But – that being said, this team has done it, and they've done big things. They've been to the NCAA tournament back-to-back -back years without her already and, and with limited pitching a year ago. Think about the depth of the pitching that, you know, Courtney Wallace and Sarah Harness had to take on a year ago, and now they've added even more depth. And I know that they're excited about a couple of the freshmen. And, uh, you know, Kaylin Kenny, we saw some really good things from her last weekend. She's back healthy. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think – they'll rally and they'll realize, you know, hey, and especially someone like Billy Andrews, this is her last year. Yeah. Look, she doesn't, she doesn't get to come back next year. And so this is it for her. You got to think she wants to go out on a high note. And there's some other seniors too that this, this, they'll, they'll rally and, and they've, they've done it without her before. And, and yeah, certainly would have liked to have played with her this year, but hey, this is the cards you've been dealt. You've, you've got to rally for it. And this is still a really good softball team. You know, Sarah Harness is a veteran pitcher that will get more innings because of this. You mentioned that Kinney is back. She got hurt early last year, and she missed almost. Kaylin Kinney missed most of last year. She's also a senior pitcher. See, those will be your two stalwarts. They've got some young freshman pitchers, but Kinney and Harness will be their two main pitchers moving forward. And you're right, they still have a really good offensive lineup. Ava Breadwell was a former freshman of the year in the, in the conference. She had a bunch of hits last week in the opening weekend. She probably was the best offensive player they had last week and then the Andrews sisters who are such good players as well so tough blow today and you know I just everybody's thoughts and prayers should go out of Jordy I mean she's the one hurting the most because you know as an athlete she doesn't want to miss a season she was certainly excited about this upcoming year and playing with this team and coming back home and and trying to get this program to heights that it hadn't been to for a while so uh, really but again like I said she handles this really well I loved her post today and the messaging that she put out and uh, she will be back and as you mentioned better better than ever moving forward yeah and just again the 
Just goes to show you the kind of um, you know headspace she's in, how good of a head she has on her shoulders, and knowing the kind of people that are watching her and the hype that's behind her, the message that she put out, hey, look, this is unfortunate, but I'm going to be back better than ever. I'm going to take this year, and I'm going to support this team, but I'll be back in 2025. And, you know, just understanding that there, you, you could be down, you could pout a little bit, but she understands very, very well the kind of impact that she has, the kind of platform she has, the kind of eyeballs that are watching her every move. And so for her, her to handle this, handle it this way, and they will continue to watch her. So just what a tremendous way to, you know, put out. And, you know, I was actually, I hope it's all right to say this, but that, you know, maybe they were going to try to wait and see how to handle it. But Jordy wanted to get ahead of it and wanted to put it out there, wanted to make sure, hey, no, this is what we're doing. And and so that she, she didn't want to be a distraction either, because, you know, at this point, that's what everybody is asking. What's her status, all of that. But, you know, she, she didn't want to be a distraction to this team. Hey, here it is. This is what, it, what my role is going to be this year. I'm embracing it, and I, I'm going to be here, and I'm going to be back better than ever. So uh, kudos to her for how she's handled it, and she'll continue to be a big part of the softball team this year. Team is headed to Las Cruces, New Mexico. They'll play five games this weekend. They'll open with a doubleheader against the host school, New Mexico State, Friday. They'll play Montana on Saturday, Sacramento State on Saturday, and then they'll wrap it up with another game with Sacramento State. So they'll play Sac State twice, New Mexico State twice, and Montana once uh, this weekend. So five games coming up for them this weekend. We'll have all those on the Huskers app and Huskers.com. Nate Rohr will be with the team in Las Cruces. So long, long way to go, only one weekend. And that's, that's why she's pretty assured of getting the red shirt. She'll have to apply for the hardship, but there's no way you deny her. It happened in game one of the season. So she's got a great case. Should, it should be a no-brainer that she gets two more years of eligibility to be a Cornhusker moving forward. So uh, tough news there. Uh, Jim in Columbus said, well, maybe the softball team can come up with a, a rally call every game. This one's for Jordy or something like that. Yeah, I think, you know, the team will certainly keep them in her thoughts, but Jordy will probably be the one going, oh, don't make me the focal point. You guys go and do your thing, and she'll, she'll be a, a great rooter for her in all that. John in Omaha expressed his admiration for Jordy, crushing news for her and the Husker softball team, but I feel so badly for Jordy. My prayers are not only for her physical healing, but emotional well-being. It sounds like she has a great perspective, a wonderful head on her shoulders. Look forward to cheering her on next year. Still a big year coming up. Go Big Red. John in Omaha. So appreciate those. Keep those uh, firing in throughout the show. We have a busy show tonight. The head football coach. We found him. We found him. He's in the building. That's good. He's not been in the building much for the last two months. Yeah, it's been... Um... Well, they still had recruiting to do. They had another signing day, and but it was really cool. Um, you know, his daughters participated in the cheer clinic, and you know, I know he was there at the women's game on Sunday. And um, he's, you know, talk about he's probably in the top five uh, Husker support, yes. uh, Huskers number one fans of all other sports. He's he's there for the men's games and was there for the women's game. Was a, a huge supporter, but. You know, I know he was there watching his daughters, but it's just so cool that he is there. He's present, and he's, but yeah, he's been a busy man, but he still takes time out to go support these other programs. I know it means a lot to the, the programs when he does show up. Love it. We're going to have him here in just a couple of minutes. Will Bull had a press conference today. Huskers headed to Arlington to begin their baseball season on Friday. We'll hear what the head coach has to say about his team just a couple of days out from their opener Friday morning, 11 a.m., down in Globe Life Field, the home of the Texas Rangers. They'll be playing the Baylor Bears on Friday. So we'll have some clips from Will Bolt. And we'll get to Jessica's post-game interview with C.J. Wilcher from the Huskers' win on Saturday over Michigan, a 20-point Husker victory over the Wolverines. We'll recap that for you as well. And we want you to be a part of it, 402-413-2400. We're inside of our Huskers Radio Network broadcast center sponsored by acres the midwest premier john deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more acres solutions for every field we're back with a head football coach next life is busy wouldn't it be great if someone could help you manage your insurance well i do have a lot to keep on top of between the house my life insurance the car like you said life is busy a local trusted choice independent insurance agent can help you with your research coverage selection pricing and claims at no extra cost to you which means i'll have more time to spend on other things trusted choice independent insurance agents we'll help do your insurance you just do you there's no community like a Cenex community 
And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Central Valley Ag knows the importance of matching your mineral program to local grazing and feeding conditions. That's why CVA Power Minerals are carefully crafted to meet the unique needs of your herd. For a limited time, register for a discount on CVA Power Cow and Power Range Minerals and get a branded apparel item with a minimum ton purchase. Visit cvacoop.com to learn more. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at woodhouse.com where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. Things that impair you come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are the shape of beer and liquor bottles. Others look like cigarettes but aren't cigarettes at all. These are the things we know impair us, the things our parents warned us about. What we're not always aware of is our new prescription or the -the over-the-counter medicine we picked up just for allergies or a bad cold. See, it doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If you are impaired, driving is deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you, too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Huskers. Husker fans across America's heartland. Not All Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Not All Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Not All Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! And we're back with Zana here on a Tuesday night. Delighted to be joined now by the head football coach, the Corn Huskers, Matt Rowe. Great to have you back in the building. I mean, for the last two months, you've been there everywhere. It's good to be back, right? Yeah, I'm very happy to be back uh, in the locker room this morning. 
uh, having lunch with the guys, being around them in the weight room. It's it's good to be back back here with you know the people that. Uh, this is why you get into coaching to be around young people, and it's been great. And for the staff too. I mean, they've kind of been on the same trajectory as you. They've been out just to be around your players. That's what you're in the business for is to coach football and be with these guys. Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, we uh, uh, we we love our guys, and um, we've even seen each other. You know, we're on the road. You don't you don't have a chance to see each other, but uh, you know we, we want this to be a family, and um, we have to spend time together. And so it's good to be back. How important is this time of year for a football program? The winter conditioning part of it. In your eyes, how big is this? I think it's crucial. It's it's where you establish uh, your standards. You know what you're going to tolerate. You know what you're going to accept. What you're not going to tolerate. I think it's where you build brotherhood. You know. Um, you and I don't have to listen to the same music. We don't have to. We don't have to like the same food. But if I look over and I see you paying a price, and I'm paying the same price, then you know, then I know uh, I can count on you when things get hard. And so, um, the more you look at like research, the more you look at sport, the more you look at life, I think you start to realize like doing thing, hard things is really important. You know, we have to challenge ourselves. We have to push ourselves. It's not punishment. It's an opportunity. And so. Guys coming in, working hard, working together, uh, recognizing that what they thought was possible, what they thought was their limit really wasn't their limit. They can go beyond that. Um, I think that's, that's what's going to make us great. Are you further ahead, and the answer is going to be yes, now than you were 12 months ago, and in what ways can you measure or see that? We're definitely uh, way further ahead. I, I think it's just even in the conversations, right? Like um, as we get ready to start match drills, as we get ready to start – you know, walkthroughs as we get ready even to go to spring ball. Guys so much uh, know, more know what to expect. And so, you know, we want them to obviously, no matter what you put in front of them, to attack it. But it's way easier when you kind of know the rules of engagement, when you know what's expected. And, uh, you know, last year's standard cannot be this year's standard. Um, you know, last year's standard got us to five and seven. And that's, that's players, that's coaches, that's staff, that's everyone. Um, we want to be better today than we were yesterday. So certainly better than we were last year. So I, I just think I feel it when I see the communication, when I see guys talking to each other, when I walk into a room and guys, you know, everyone's not on their cell phone while they're eating lunch. They're talking to each other. They're around each other. Um, I, I'm, I'm proud to be associated with this group. And I think when you go back to last year and you look at the veteran players, the Luke Reimers and Nick Henriches, all those guys, they did something really hard and they allowed us to be where we are now, where we can, you know, start, start at, at a much higher level, you know, pushing that, pushing that rock up the hill. They gave you a baseline. Right, they gave you a starting point. No doubt, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and it was hard for them, and it was scary for them because it was different, and what we're doing this year isn't different. It's, uh, it's just kind of what we do. All right, part of the, your journeys over the last two months have been out to see people. The transfer portal has certainly been active, and you, you added some parts. Let's start in the wide receiver room. Talk about the guys you've added from the portal to the wide receiver room, and why was that important? Well, I think we have a great young receiving core. Uh, guys who are fast, who are dynamic, uh, made a ton of plays last year, guys coming in. Um, it was really important to us, you know, to add in along with IGC, along with Alex Bullock, an older player or two um, that, that's been there, that's done that, that's experienced this, so that we can have this wonderful blend in that room of talent and experience, uh, youth and, and a veteran mindset. And that, I think that'll benefit us, you know, for the long run. And so. Uh, you know, uh, Banks has come in. You know, Jamal's just an unbelievably mature young man. Uh, who he is on the field is only trumped by who he is off the field. And um, he's competing at everything. And he's one of those guys who's, he's, you know, he's raising the standard um, in that room in terms of, you know, what he's done off the field. And so now as we start to get on the field, I look forward to seeing him doing that. And Mayor is a guy that's, you know, been through so much adversity. He has so much talent. And... Um, I think it's a really good message to send to the guys that it's it's not always how you start is how you finish and sometimes as a freshman you're so wound up but but your your journey in life and your journey in, in football isn't a sprint it's a marathon and uh, anxious to see him finish the right way so you know and, and, and have the success he deserves so uh, I think we have a great room and I think we've done a lot you know in recruiting and in the portal to get there you and back in December, signing day, you said you really liked your wide, your running back room, and you added a, a body there, young guy from Oregon. What attracted you to him? Well, I think when you look at uh, 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 Dowdell, like he's just a big, powerful man, and uh, he's young. I mean, he's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, in, in the Big Ten, uh, in the weather that we play in, uh, in the conditions and the way we want to play, having a guy that can finish games, having a guy that can get short yards, and that doesn't mean our other guys can't. Um, you know, two things can be two things can be true, and so we love the receiving, running back room. Excuse me, we love the guys that we have there. 
but to add in another young player um, wh who has size and physicality, um, you can never have enough good guys carrying the football, and so I think we got better with that. Yesterday, the media got a chance to talk to your newest addition on the staff, Glenn Thomas. We had him on Sports Island a few weeks ago. Really enjoyed that conversation. Why was he the fit for you? Well, you know, as I look back at um, my experiences as a head coach, you know, and these wild swings of, you know, starting off with bad seasons, coming back, having good seasons, you know, one common theme was, was quarterback play. And when I look back to P.J. Walker, when I look back to Charlie Brewer, two young players who as freshmen played and then eventually, you know, led us to, you know, championship caliber seasons, you know, Glenn was right there in the thick of it. And, um, you know, from the very first time his name was brought up to me by Marcus, um, I remember we were uh, recruiting, uh, I think we were in uh, Brooklyn or New York, I can't remember. I was with a guy named Mike Saravo, who was one of my longtime coaches, and he was talking to Matt Ryan because he had coached him at Boston College, and Matt was saying, hey, uh, Glenn's really good and here's why. And when you hear a player of Matt Ryan's caliber say that, you have to listen to it. Um, but I, I know he's going to co coach the quarterbacks at a high level. I know he's going to make sure we have an elite plan in the passing game along with Garrett and along with Sat. And uh, there's just a great vibe and energy with those guys. You know, last year what we did was you brought all these guys in who had not worked together. Marcus hadn't worked with Garrett. Um, you, know, uh, you know, Josh stepped in and became a tight ends coach. Don, you had all these guys. I thought they did a great job of melding and coming together. And now, you, you know, you don't want to upset that. But to have, still have, you know, Josh in the building, really, really grateful for Josh Martin, all the things that he's done. And he's a great, great, great coach. But to bring in a guy who's an expert at quarterbacks who can really dive into these players and help them play at their best and has a relationship with me as a relationship with sat done it at every level um to me it was a no-brainer i was just really fired up that he said yes and uh he came came to join us is there something kind of refreshing to have him new and then dylan and danny new at the same time and they can all kind of grow together is there is there am i oversimplifying that maybe yeah, you know what um um maybe I, I you know i don't know i hadn't really thought about that i, I do think um what's been fun for me is you know, uh, him coming in since he wasn't here last year and putting fresh eyes on things. And, and a lot of things that we do, you know, we, we did before when we were together. And, you know, it's really simple for him to kind of come in and say, hey, you know, hey, why we change the split on that? Or, hey, we're, I see we're doing this now and, and get that perspective. And, and maybe sometimes you say, you know, oh, maybe we should go back to the way we did it. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not really too involved in those conversations right now. My, my job this time of year is way different. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's you know, the offensive staff and the defensive staff. and. Uh, I'm trying to help players become their best, and so um, I just—it's so great a feeling for me knowing that I can, I can know that you know uh, Glenn's in that room. I don't have to worry about what's being said to the quarterbacks. I know he's going to teach every quarterback at the pace they need to learn at, and uh, really make sure his job's not to pick who's the starting quarterback. His job is to make every player be the best quarterback they can be, and he takes that really seriously. And he'll do the same thing for our passing game, and you know that the coordinator title, you know, for me, that's not just something to get someone to come here. That's something I believe in. He's called plays for me before. He's designed systems for me before, and I have a lot of confidence in him. Coach, a lot of Husker fans were kind of nervous the last few days. Tony White's name kept popping up. His alma mater, UCLA, was open. They have now filled that role. That's a compliment, though, right, to you, to, to Tony, that people are kind of interested in maybe seeing him as a future head coach? Yeah, I don't think it says anything. I don't think it speaks to me. I think it speaks to him. And, um, you know, I know they ultimately settled on Deshaun Foster, who was a player when I was a GA, and so really happy for Deshaun. But I, I thought Tony would have been an excellent, excellent choice. And, uh, you know, Martin Jarman, the AD there, I, I had a chance to speak with him. And, and um, I don't want to lose Tony White at all. I, I, I love Tony. I want him to coach here forever. Uh, but there will come a time when he's going to have an opportunity to be a head coach, and he deserves that. And I think we have great young coaches in that room who are ready to be coordinators. And so one more year kind of as we build this system and morph kind of into what we want to be, I, I think I'd love to have that. But my job, is to, my job is to help people be their best. Um, and so if I'm helping all the players be their best, if I'm helping all the coaches be their best and staff, then I think they're, they're going to turn around and they're going to give me their best. They're going to give the team their best. And so um, it's hard when you're sitting here in the middle of uh, February and someone's looking at your defensive coordinator. But at the end of the day, like, you know, uh, Tony's going to give me his best. I have to give him my best. And so would have loved for him to have that opportunity, fired up that he's with us. And even as he went through the, you know, the, the uh, off season, you know, and some opportunities came along, and I just told him, we're, we're going to continue to get better and better and better. And as we, you know, as, as we resurge and as we, as we you know, move up each year and get a little bit better and move into the national picture, a lot of that credit's going to go to Tony, and he'll have an opportunity uh, to be a head coach. He'll be a great one, and uh, hopefully, hopefully I can do some things along the way to, to help prepare him. 
but uh, he does a lot of that on his own. Spring game tickets went on sale a week ago, over 40,000 already gobbled up. I think we'll get close to a sellout by that. You're going to kick it at 11. That's earlier. Your thoughts on kicking off at 11? Yeah, you know, they, they, they came to me. Uh, Doug Ewald came to me and was like, hey, what time do you guys want to play? You know, um, uh, you know, men's and women's baseball, excuse me, women's softball, uh, men's baseball was kind of asking and I kind of asked why, you know, well, they had some games. And I think it's an unbelievable I, I, I opportunity for us to play uh, football early. Um, <coughs> excuse me, have an 11 a.m. kick. Uh, then go over and watch. I don't know who's first, baseball or softball, if they're at the same time. But, you know, I, I think it's an unbelievable opportunity for us just to have a day of Husker athletics, right? And, you know, what's wrong with, you know, what's, having, what's wrong with having a go big red day? So um, it also helps us a ton in recruiting to have people, you know, come in the night before, get up in the morning, come, um, go, go to the football game. And then we have a ton of time afterwards to recruit, maybe take them over to the softball game, go, take them over to the baseball game. You know, let, let me say this, you know, my, my, my heart... Uh, goes out to Jordy Ball, like just, just devastating news to find that out. But I, I loved her perspective. I love the fact that she knows that uh, she wasn't put on earth just to just to, just to pitch a softball, and that the Lord has uh, much 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 greater plans for her, and knows knows exactly what she needs. So, but I, I certainly will pray for her, as I will for all our student athletes as they have injuries and go through the ups and downs. I think it's important for all of us to to remember that they're that they're they're young people and. Um, they go through a lot, but hated to see that for her. Uh, but I know Coach Ravel on the team, you know, the, they'll, they'll be ready to go. I look forward to watching them play this year. And uh, so I think that's just a really cool day uh, where we can you know, recruit at a high level, hopefully give an experience to our players of playing in front of the greatest, you know, fans in college football, have, give our fans something really cool to watch as they watch some of these returning players, watch some of the young players. You know, see, I'm sure everyone's going to be asking me about the quarterbacks. It'll be fun to let those guys go play in that environment. So it should be a really cool day. Good. Non-football question for you. I know you've been at some of these basketball games. You were court storming after one of them. The Wisconsin win by the men, where they were down big at half, and then the game Sunday where Amy's team was down 14 on the fourth quarter. Amazing comebacks. As a coach, as a, a fan first, and then as a coach, you have to appreciate the fight to not give up in those kind of games, and that kind of speaks to culture for those two programs, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll, be, I'll, I'll say this. I, I was emotional on, on Sunday as I, I, I walked back in the back and was high-fiving uh, the young lady, the women, as they came in and, and, and hugged Amy, um, you know, because because uh, they, that team fought for that team and they fought for each other. And I mean, I can't imagine being Jazz Shelley and having to walk up there and shoot those free throws. Like, if you asked me to shoot a free throw in front of 20 people, I'd have, I'd start to have heart palpitations. And she walked up there, but it's how hard they played. And what I loved about the way the women played was, you know, they were down kind of before the half and they came back. And then they were down in the, in, the, in the fourth quarter, and they came back. And um, it was beautiful. You know, I, I told some of my friends, um, if you want to know what's right with the world, go, go to that basketball game. I was sitting around all these Iowa fans and how awesome they were. You know, they were like, they were like congratulating us at the end of the game. And um, just a really, really cool day. And then, you know, I, I've been, I was at both the men's, you know, big, you know top ten wins. Um, and the first one was obviously exhilarating. But I showed up a little bit late. You know, we were doing some football stuff, and I showed up when we were down 17. And what I loved about that game was that, like, that team went out, and they fought for the team, but they also fought for, I thought they fought for, you know, Coach Hoiberg and, you know, fought for each other. Like, they went out there, and they're like, you know, Coach is out there. He's coaching his tail off. You know, Sam's out there. He's diving on the ball. Casey's doing this. Wilch is doing this. Like, I thought they battled for each other. That was, I don't know what was said in the locker room. I don't know, but... Um, I thought it was just a team rallying. And so that's what I loved about all the wins I've seen is, you know, it's not about who we played, the fact that we beat it. It's about the fact that, like, our teams battled and, and fought for each other. And I know I'm going long here, but I want to say this. I thought it was really cool at the women's game the other day to see the, all, the men's team yeah. down there. I thought it was really cool at the men's game to see, you know, the women's volleyball team watching. I mean, just the amount of support being within uh, not just, you know, you know, the entire Husker Nation, but just amongst the athletic department, really awesome. And so i um, really proud of them, and I'm looking forward to win some more games and let's get to the tournaments. Well, and I know that's kind of what you want your program to be. We, we're going to get down to some games. Do we respond and we fight back? And that's, that's what you're trying to get the Huskers to do on Saturdays. Yeah, no doubt. I think the thing that I have to do a really good job of is, is you know, last year we had some tough losses. And so for me it's like, okay, that was year one. We had some tough losses, uh, but I know tough losses, close losses become close wins, eventually become big wins. If you handle it right, and so you just, you look at it, you say to yourself, okay, we're three or points, three, we need three or four points more here, three or four points more there, and you fight, scratch and claw during this time of year, during the spring and summer to 
to gain those points, to, to, to find the margins. For a lot of people, those losses last year were like year five of that. You're, and so I, and that's, that's, I think, where we all as a fan base, that's where we as an athletic department, we as a coaching staff, we can't get caught up in, in, in hey, this has happened. Um, this is a brand new team, good or bad. Like when we finally get to the point where we're winning championships, each year becomes a new year and each team becomes a new team. And, you know, you go back and listen to Coach Osborne talk after winning national championships. That's, that's pretty much what he would say. Yeah. And so he, he taught us. And so that, that whole concept, that whole belief in getting day by day better, um, our guys, we don't, we don't need to worry about last year anymore. Like we know what we need to do. We need to get about three or four points better. We got to wake up every day now and fight for it. But I do want us to be a team that, that fights for each other. When we get down, we're not saying, here we go again. We say, what a chance to prove what it means to be a Husker. You know, what a, ch- what a chance it proves to me to play at the University of Nebraska. Let's go fight and let's win these games in the fourth quarter. So I can't wait until we get late in the, late in the first game, second game, third game, whatever it is, and it's in the fourth quarter and it's a close game because it's our, a chance for our guys to say, you know what, enough's enough. Let's get done with uh, thinking negative. Let's think positively, and good things will happen. Good. Good to have you back in town. Let's have some fun in the next few weeks on spring ball. Let's go. I love it. Good to see you, brother. There he is, head football coach Matt Rule with us here on Sports Sunday. Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. All right, what do you think? 402-413-2400. We'll open the phone lines. The text lines are always open and available for you. Jessica will rejoin me next. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbin, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! If you're an unconditional, wholehearted, and ever-so-loyal Husker fan, you deserve to pay like one everywhere you go. With the free FNBO Husker Visa debit card, fuel your fandom all season and beyond with a debit card just for you. It's free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get your free Husker Visa debit card at any branch or at fnbo.com slash huskers. Member FDIC. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families. A legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. 
Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at woodhouse.com, where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. Back inside the Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp rejoined by Jessica Cootie. That was a fun conversation with the coach. What stood out to you? Yeah, well, how could you not go back to just what he said about the women's win and how he got emotional about it and just supporting that team and just watching them fight in that way? Um, but I also, too, liked, you know, him talking about the, the fit with Glenn Thomas and but then also the importance of this time of year and how this was really what set the tone for what this because because what Coach Rule does at this level and the collegiate level is uh, is it built around that culture and it is just such an important time of establishing that. And now that the guys that are coming back know the importance of this time of year, how are they attacking it? And so. Yeah, there were lots of lots of good nuggets in there. Fun stuff. Doc in Lincoln on our text line said, Coach Rule is not a coach of mine. I'm a medical professional who's more than 20 years removed from college. And, heck, I would run through the wall for the guy. <laughs> Can't imagine how those football players feel, but I absolutely love him. Bring on the new season. Wish he was on the show more often. Doc, I'm with you. We want him on more often, too. But he's a pretty busy guy. And I, I think he, I, you know, he credited again, he kind of went back, Jessica, and credited Luke and Nick and said those guys, it was so hard for them last winter, but that they set that kind of baseline and this is the, the bare minimum of what we expect. And he goes, they did it, and now we're trying to build up from there. Yeah, and I think they, they set such a great example for those other guys in that linebacker room. I mean, again, just kind of seeing how they interact on the sidelines and seeing how Luke and Nick, it's almost like, they knew the importance of bringing some of those guys along, knowing that they would be gone, and just um, you know instilling some of the, the same things. It just they were such teachers throughout the process too. I mean, they were leaders, but they were teachers, and I, I it's like they had this you know this kind of fruition that it was going to be important for them to kind of establish the next generation and and help those guys along and certainly there are other guys i mean you could point to a marquise buford that will no doubt be a leader ty robinson nash when he's all in and and can be all in and, and not uh, you know balancing wrestling there there are some great leaders that are coming back on the defensive side of the ball but i just i think how many times have we hear coach rule bring up luke reimer and nick henrich and throughout the year and so i you know just going back to that linebacker group it's just such a natural leadership position and trying to see like makai bear was yep. was a guy that i think can be a tremendous leader as well um you know there's just there's a there's some guys that are in that group that i think certainly can you can see emerge that will be Good, um, will be able to maybe step in, not not build the shoes, not be those guys, but maybe fill some of that those roles and that those voids left behind by those guys. You're 100 percent correct. 
and you're not, you didn't err on this, but all those guys you mentioned are on defense. Who are going to be the guys on offense? And I think that needs to be established in the next six months. And that's the opportunity for those quarterbacks. And I think Heinrich will try to take the bull by the horns, but will he be the guy eventually? That's why you need Dylan and Danny to kind of start establishing themselves as the quarterbacks on that side of the ball. But that the offense needs to find some of those Rhymers and Henriches to hang their hats on. I think they will, but they got to find them. And we'd be remiss not to mention Isaac Gifford, who will be absolutely instrumental. There's another one. You know, that's a guy that is on that same kind of level as Nick and Luke and what they did last year. He certainly will be a big part too. He's coming back, but you know, I I think it starts. And and how many times have we heard Je, um, Jeremiah talk about this? But the guys up front, you know. Even despite losing Nuri and Ethan. Ethan Piper, you still got a, a lot of experience coming back. And Turner and Ben Scott and ben ben Bryce Hart. Ben Hart and um, you know Justin Evans. And so there's still that's a group that you you want to be your leaders on offense, right? I mean that's typically you, when you've got a, a good offense and a good offensive unit is when that group can lead together and you you're kind of building towards where that that can be that with that group. Um, you know, maybe a, a tri um, a Thomas Fedoni and could could really emerge as a leader as well. And, and some of those uh, older wide receivers, I, I think we, we started to see. I was so impressed with Isaiah Garcia Castaneda and how many, I, I can't tell you how many times, like when I would talk to those younger wide receivers, how much they would mention him. And even when he'd be on crutches and he was, he was coaching those guys up on the sideline and trying to tell them what they saw, you know, and, and um, he was there every step of the way. And, and they, he was important to some of those younger receivers, too. So, you know, we'll see. But definitely that's where you point to who could it be, where I think there are some guys right now we certainly know will know be on the defensive side yeah, of the ball. That's the next six months are critical in my mind, and that's why. I've got one more thought on this, but i got to get to the break. I'll hold it for the next segment. You folks could be a winner of a 2024 Porsche making from Porsche of Omaha. Husker fans will have a chance to win that Porsche if they can make a full-court putt at halftime of men's basketball games this season. To get more information and the official rules, go to huskers.com slash putt. I would have finished my thought, but Cole is waving his finger at me to take a break. So we'll take a break. I'll finish my thought next. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. As a fan, you wear your jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. There's a place for people like you. The Cox Fan Zone. Play NFL Pick'em and Collegiate Pick'em for a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card each week or even a $500 Visa gift card grand prize. Hey, Oscar fans, this is Greg Sharp. Say Fan Zone in your Contour Voice remote to play. Not at home? Visit Cox.com slash Fan Zone. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. 
Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnys at Exarbin, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Back inside the Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Tuesday night. No show tomorrow, Husker women's basketball. they got a big challenge tomorrow. They're at Ohio State, who's currently in first place, thanks to the Huskers, who beat Iowa on Sunday, put the Buckeyes into first place. Big challenge tomorrow night, 6 o'clock tip 5:30 for pregame here on the network with uh, Matt Codney and Jeff Grish. All right. One other thought you mentioned coach talking about Glenn Thomas and he kind of weaved his way into saying, "Well, you know, last year we had guys that hadn't worked together really on the offensive side of the ball. That Garrett was a player, not a coach when Marcus was at Baylor with them and Donovan Riola was obviously not a part of this group uh, and the offensive line staff and then Justin Martin, Josh Martin was the interim tight ends coach and he was kind of new to this group and you by the way, you picked up on this I think at the Minnesota game where you were like the defensive staff they're like working in sync and I don't get that same feel. Well I think coach kind of admitted that there that Glenn's going to be a guy that's been with these guys and maybe can give them that stability that we saw, you saw right from the get go last year from the defensive staff. Yeah and, and I remember um, you know talking to Tony White about that. He was in studio for the coaches show that next week and he had really, you could tell he was really proud of that fact. And the fact too, not only were they on the same page and that was our first game all together, but um, they had to change up some signals and stuff because they, Syracuse had played Minnesota. And so it was kind of, they were trying to take a little bit away of what Tony White had done at Syracuse before so they were changing some things up so the fact that I know I just remember him being really proud of the way that they were they were so in sync and I think a, a lot of that too is a lot of those guys had worked together before even though Tony White was new but Co uh, coach Dvorak Cooper Pot uh, Knighton all had all had worked together before and so I think they all and then they sync they just sync so well together with coach White and it was just such a collaborative effort and I just think they had a lot of guys that um, on the offensive side of the ball that were in different roles that hadn't coached together that even you know maybe the familiarity familiarity with coach rule still was new together and so yeah i think now now you've got some guys that have some familiarity with each other and then they've worked together for a year i think it will be a big difference uh this season and i think we'll start to see in the spring i do too i, I think that will be a big advance for this program on that side of the ball and we and with nobody leaving the defensive side you've got that continuity back for that and that's not going to change at all but i when he made that comment i'm like ding 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 that's kind of what you picked up down on the sidelines that man it was a difference between the offense and defense moving forward. All right, hour one in the books. When we come back, we'll hear from C.J. Wilcher. Jessica caught up with him after the Huskers' 20-point victory over the Wolverines on Saturday. And Will Bolt had a press conference today to talk about the upcoming season. Huskers will open up in Arlington, Texas. They're going to play some old Big 12 rivals, Baylor, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma in the first weekend of the season. We'll hear from the baseball coach coming up next hour. Woodhouse Auto Family, your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. One hour down, one to go. Come on back. Let's keep having some fun here on Sports Nightly. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the keno parlor is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. 
Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Com. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, <laughs> cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Hey, Mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska.
Good evening, I'm Duke Rude, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Nebraska baseball team is getting ready to start their season this weekend at Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. The Huskers will face Baylor on Friday, Texas Tech on Saturday, and Oklahoma on Sunday as a part of the Shriners Children's College Showdown. Head coach Will Bolt had a press conference today where he announced the starting pitchers for this weekend's slate. Yep, we'll go. Uh, we'll go Sears on Friday. Uh, we'll go uh, Walsh on Saturday, uh, and then we'll go Caleb Clark on Sunday. Nebraska softball player Jordy Ball announced today that she suffered an ACL injury and will miss the rest of the 2024 season. The injury occurred in the third inning of the opening game of the year against Washington. Jazz Shelley was named AP National College Women's Basketball Player of the Week after scoring 23 points in Nebraska's win against number two Iowa. Shelley is the first Husker to win this award in school history. Nebraska wrestler Ridge Lovett won NCAA Wrestler of the Week for the first time in his career. This comes after Lovett defeated number six Austin Gomez of Michigan 11 to four to improve to 20 and 0. Two games in Big Ten men's basketball tonight. Michigan trailing number 14 Illinois 47 to 29 at halftime, and number 20 Wisconsin hosting Ohio State. Our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 2 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key, you betcha! Natalie Potts, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week with a triple. Getting a hand on it was Jawan Gary, Wilcher scoops it up now to Williams across the timeline, Williams to the trailing, Wilcher fumbled it, got it back, drives to the baseline, 15-footer up, got it, got it, got it, got it! We got a tie ball game! Eight on the shot clock, Gary and White, right wing, needs help, high lob underneath, Markowski. It's a double team. Kicks to the deep left corner. Moriarty with two. With one. Her three-pointer. It's back rim. It goes in. You betcha. Kendall Moriarty with a triple. Huge shot. The pump fake by Mass. Step back three on the way. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Holy smokes. Holy cow. The Flying Dutchman with a big three to tie it at 65. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are back, Sports Nightly, hour number two. Man, I kind of gave a woof when uh, Duke was giving the scores. Michigan's men's getting down 18 at half to Illinois, just getting drilled. It's so bizarre to look up and see the men standings right now, and you've got Michigan and Ohio State are 13th and 14th in this league. That is hard to believe. Those are two pretty good basketball programs that are having really bad years right now. I don't think anybody feels sorry for them at all. And I don't think what <laughs> it's what you expected going into it. Maybe no. maybe Michigan, but Ohio State, I think people thought would Middle be better. Middle of the pack, maybe? Yeah. So, Speaking of all, they are kind of young. They are, but that coach, hot, that seat's probably getting really warm in Columbus. Speaking of Columbus, that's where the Husker women will be tomorrow night. It's a big challenge. And athletically, this is maybe a good a team as there is in the league. They just have different, they've got really good athletes at Ohio State. They do. They really do. And they, um, gosh, they play so well. And they've, they've, a lot of them have played together for a long time. They have the um, couple of players that have, have been there and have been a part of some deep runs and just a couple of those players that are like, gosh, is it time for you to graduate yet? Right. Like the, the JC, um, just blanked our last name, but anyways. So yeah, it's a tough matchup, especially again, and, and we saw this with the men coming off the emotional win over Purdue, didn't respond well when they hit the road next. And so hopefully the women um, respond well, because it is, it's a tough matchup. But hey, on the bright side, you know, and, and they're fully, they'll fully expect to go in there and win, and I think we do too, but on the bright side, if it is a loss, it doesn't hurt your RPI That's or right. your, your net ranking no, at all. Won't. Um, so it's it's not because it's on the road and such a good basketball team. But yeah, this is a big opportunity. And you want to talk about even solidifying and moving up your spot and your seedings. You knock this, off Iowa and Ohio State ooh. back to back, and then you've got Purdue, who you should handle. And then um, 
Northwestern. It, Northwestern not, is not very good. So you should, you could maybe, you could very well potentially string together some a really impressive run here to continue to improve your seating at this point in the postseason. J.C. Sheldon's who Sheldon, who you're thinking yes. of. She's a graduate student, averaging 17. You're right. She's been there forever. Celeste Taylor is also a graduate student. One of the so their backcourt, very veteran. They've got. Uh, I'll butcher the name. It's like a Russian name. Mikolakovsky, uh, she's 6'4". She's another graduate. So they start three graduate students yeah. um, uh, along for that Ohio State to 21-3 and three is their record. 12-1 and one in the league. They beat Iowa, too. That's, remember, that was the, the court, court storming that knocked Caitlin Clark on her butt. Quote, unquote. Um, they also have... They also have two graduates who come off the bench. So they have like four graduated. So these are people using their COVID years. Uh, that are, so it's a very, very much a veteran basketball team that, that the Oscars will play tomorrow night. Six o'clock tip on the air on the network here at 530 tomorrow night. Uh, so uh, be tuned in for that. It will bump us off the air tomorrow night. The men don't play till Saturday. Finally, the men get a little downtime, a little break here as they're going to go Saturday to Saturday. The Michigan game this past week, Penn State coming up this week. Jessica had a chance after that 20-point win over the Wolverines this past Saturday at PBA to catch up with C.J. Wilcher. All right, well, how good did that win feel in the locker room? Great, great. Um, it was a great win for us to, after we having two tough losses on the road, it was good for us to come back here and play in front of our fans and get a good win. What about the start for you guys? Uh, how important was the, the fast start? And you guys got off to a great start here tonight. Yeah, um, well, in, in film, we kind of went over that, the fact that they get off to good starts, and um, we just had to match that. And that's what we did. Shout out to Josiah for uh, helping us with that and setting the tone offensively on, on the rebounds and taking advantage of mismatches and stuff. That literally was my next question. Is just how big was he to kind of get things going for you guys? And just, I know that Coach Hoiberg challenged him, but, you know, those offensive rebounds, what does that do for you guys? Huge, man. It gives, a lot, uh, gives another opportunity to, uh, to um, put points on the board, you know. And um, at times, of course, we struggle with that. And, you know, just getting those second chance opportunities will help us get, get another basket, the opportunity at, at that. Just one turnover, uh, you know, how good was it, too, to just take care of the basketball? I know that probably was an emphasis, too, for you guys. One turnover the whole game? In the first half. Oh, the first half. Oh, yeah. all right. That, I mean, you guys ended up like six. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, that's dope, though. Um, of course, that's, that's something we focus on, too, rebounding and, and uh, taking care of the ball. You know, we, we, uh, when we do well in those categories, we usually win the game or give us the best shot, shot to win the game. So. Is that, once again, racked up a bunch of assists, too. I think it's just so cool to watch you guys, how you make the extra pass. Um, how important is that for this team and what you guys do, just, again, to the sharing of the basketball? Yeah, um, we got a lot of elite guys, man, uh, that can put the ball in the basket in all different types of ways. And I think today was our, our best job at, at getting everybody touches, and whether that may, wait, may be a, for a shot or a Gretzky or, um, you know, it was, just, it was just good to see. It was great basketball today. Last time I talked to Casey, I asked him about you and, and his relationship. You guys seem to really feed off of each other, be really supportive of each other. How fun is it for you to get to play with him? Yeah, it's super fun playing with Kay. His, uh, his energy is contagious, and um, he always bigs me up. He, after a miss shot, make shot, he always tells me keep shooting, you know what I mean? And of course, likewise, I do the same. So. Yeah, that's what you say. You, you do it for him, too. Yeah. You know, your role this season, and you, you just have provided such a spark off the bench. How much have you enjoyed stepping into that role and, and being that for this team? Um, it's great, man. Um, just to be a part of the growth and the development of this program and um, just be able to have uh, impact the game uh, being I've been here you know what I mean and just for me to have some space to impact the game consistently has been super dope to experience so first bye week for you guys how needed is it right now super needed super needed my body's hurting right okay. now <laughs> what's the goal for, though, for this team over these next few days that you do kind of get to maybe rest recuperate but then also work on some things before you hit the I guess hit the floor again next week. Yeah, um, I mean it's important not to get too lax because mm -hmm. um, we still got games that we have to win to um, so we could reach our goal, which is me playing in the tournament um, at the end of the year. So we, we just got to keep our foots uh, on the gas, you know, while while still pressing on the brakes a little bit, you know. So Absolutely. appreciate your time, CJ. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's uh, another big one. It's it's crazy. I feel like you every week or every other day tell me about the bubble watch, and it's like if they win, they're in, and if if they lose, they're out. A little pressure. And yeah. so, you know, you, you got to take this time, get healthy, get right. I sat down with Josiah today, and, and he had mentioned how much it was needed. And certainly they're going to keep a, working on things and, and trying to get better throughout this week. But this team needed that bye week to, to get a couple of days to rest their bodies and, and get right because it, it was a grind that they just made it through. So, uh, but they'll be back on the court on Saturday and they'll have to take care of business at home. They've, they've just got to protect the home court. I think it was as big mentally as it was physically. You gotta just have a chance to breathe and kind of collect your thoughts and relax for a day or two. 
And Coach Hoiberg would like his response to your question because Coach Hoiberg says we can't get lax just because we have a few days off. We got to keep going because Penn State's playing some good basketball. They'll be here for that Saturday morning game, and then it's off to Indiana, and that's a tough place to play. So today was a day off for them, and I know you got a chance to talk to, to Joe and his sister, uh, Rebecca, earlier today. So uh, he took a took us off day and came over and spent time with you. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's such a fun conversation. They have such a neat relationship. Um, so get to know them a little bit more. But they are actually, it was in kind of a, they had a busy day. Um, the Big Ten Network is also putting together a, a, the journey, and which is a really cool series that they do featuring um, highlighting student athletes in, in the Big Ten. So they're putting together a, a really cool feature that uh, will be, I don't know when they'll release it, but they are going to be part of the journey. And so, yeah, they had cameras following them around everywhere. We had cameras in here in the studio. So when you watch the, the podcast on YouTube, you'll see some of the Big Ten cameras in, in some of the frames. But, you know, they were just kind of following them around for the day. So they, But both of them have such great personalities. They, they like doing this kind of stuff. Some of the athletes, I think, get a little tired of it. Like, I, I think Nash, Hotmaker, gets, yeah. he's not really one of the, yeah. the, those that, really loves doing interviews, but but I think Josiah and Becca certainly do. The journey's been following the Oscars a lot. They, they have. had a piece on Casey. They did a piece on Rink and now doing this one with the Alex. So they they like coming here and right now Nebraska's a good story. This this basketball team's a good story. Well and think about they did a couple in volleyball season. They did. So yeah they've uh, but yeah, I, it's just every time you listen to, and again, the Huskers have been on so many different platforms already, the, the basketball team, every time you hear these new analysts come on, it's, it's like they've become the darling of college basketball this season. And almost everybody is rooting for them, wants them to get in, thinks they deserve to be in, are kind of giving, because, you know, these analysts will get on there and, and have their airtime, and they will get on there you know, arguments on, on certain, put in their two cents and certainly make their cases for certain teams. And it seems like a lot of these guys are getting on there trying to push for Nebraska. Not just, most of them are saying they're not in. It's, it's how high can their seating go, which right. still, if you're talking about the bracketologist, quote unquote, they still have them kind of on the bubble a little bit. I hope they're right. I think they're right, too. I really do. Uh, speaking of TV, you were talking about BTN, and they do that. Journey's a wonderful program. Even when it's not a Husker-based thing, I find myself kind of drawn into the stories that they tell. But there was reports today that ESPN has locked up the college football playoff through, like, 30-31. But it, it, there was a caveat in there that they can, uh, they, can, uh, they can shovel some games to some other TV networks. And what I think is going on is I think you get the Big Ten behind the scenes going, well, no, hold on, wait a minute now. Our, our TV partners need to have a little slice of this pie too. So I think that was a little premature that they're saying ESPN's got the playoffs for the next seven years. I think there's some more parts that are going to be moved. And so, I want it to get moved. So is it one of those deals where um, because of the previous contract, ESPN got first say, so nobody is, is able to even get in on the conversations at this point? Because I just have a hard time believing that none of these other entities would want to get in on the conversation. I totally agree. So I, how is it just automatically right there, right going back to ESPN? Well, that's, and I think the Big Ten's asking that same question of, wait a minute here. Let's mean, because that's a disadvantage for the Big Ten because they are not paired with ESPN. And if ESPN's going to be in control, they're going to push their teams and their products. Yeah. So, I mean, we already see it with the SEC. We sure do. And the NFL's got it right. They move it around every year. The Super Bowl's on a different network every year. NBC, CBS, Fox, ES, ESPN. They get to jumble it around. That's what it ought to be. Which network is your favorite coverage of NFL? Whew. Um, I, I'll tell you what. I think Greg Olson did a really good job for Fox. Now, I know apparently Brady's going to bump him out. I, I don't know. I don't know how Brady's going to be, but... I think I think Olsen did a great job. Uh, I like Mike Tirico play by play for NBC. I do too. Collinsworth is okay. Yeah, he, it's not my favorite analyst. Yeah, Tirico's then, awesome. So it's like I wish I could pair a couple of the I analysts know. with the different. I I want to mix and match the play by play and analysts. Right? Move Troy Aikman around over here or something. Yeah, but I think they all in their own right have their own kind of niche, and that's fine. And but I like the fact that there's different voices that bring you those big games. Yeah. College football needs to do that. 
All right, when you take a break, when we come back, we'll bolt met with the media today. Huskers about ready to start the 2024 campaign down in Arlington. We'll have some clips from that. But first time to tell you that Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back with more of the show coming up. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers. Growing opportunity from the ground up. Let's face it, nothing makes you look older than you really are than thinning hair. But what if you could not only increase your hair count, but promote new hair growth without surgery, without drugs with potential side effects, and without a prescription from your doctor? Well, now you can, thanks to a breakthrough new supplement called Hair Grow. Provided by New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Europe, Hair Grow is now available in the U.S. Only Hair Grow contains Tokogaya a powerful antioxidant that has received a U.S. patent. Multiple clinical studies show hair grow is safe and effective in promoting new hair growth. In one study, 95% of the patients using hair grow saw increased hair count. Don't lose more time and more hair. Try hair grow today to feel and look your best. Just go to newnordicusa.com or visit Walgreens or Amazon to purchase. Look younger and feel more confident with hair grow by New Nordic at newnordicusa.com. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at woodhouse.com where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free. 
for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Head baseball coach Will Bolt met with the media today. The Big Red will open their season Friday at 11 a.m. at Globe Life Park, the home of the Texas Rangers in Arlington against the Baylor Bears. They'll play Texas Tech Saturday and Oklahoma on Sunday. Duke told you in the presser, that Will Bold is named as starting pitchers for those three games. It'll be Brett Sears, who was a reliever last year for Nebraska. We'll get the start Friday. And then it'll be Will Walsh, who was a starter last year on Saturday. And Caleb Clark, who started a few games last year, will go on Sunday. The coach was asked, why did those three get the early nod in the season? I think... You know, Sears was a little up and down this fall as far as his health, and he's 100% healthy, feeling great. Uh, he's been really, really good this spring. Um, obviously, dating back to last summer, he's a guy coming back we felt like would be a, a really good candidate to start. Um, and, you know, he's got four pitches he can throw for a strike. His stuff's been good, really competitive on attack. Um, felt like he was a, the guy to go to uh, right out of the shoot. And, and Walsh has the most experience returning uh, in the rotation. He's been really good this spring. Um, felt, felt like we did like that matchup uh, on Saturday. Um, and then Clark, um, again, another guy with experience. He's been, he's been really good. Stuff's up a little bit from last year. Uh, and, you know, last year he probably went to battle with one and a half pitches. Right now he's got three true pr pitches he's throwing. Um, so feel good there um, and you know Drew Drew's certainly in that mix as well he, he's been a little uh, hadn't felt great he's not injured um, but he, he's you know his stuff wasn't quite where he wanted it to be and where we wanted it to be now his last outing he was really good but don't don't feel like he's built up quite yet to start um, would expect him to be available out of the bullpen though this weekend how That's you, the news there. Yeah, Drew Crystal, because I know when you sat down with him, you thought he very well could have been the Friday night right, guy. Right. Do you feel like the depth at pitching at pitcher is going to be pretty solid for this team this I year? I do. I think yeah. that's probably the strength, and that's a great segue into the second cut. Coach was asked about the bullpen. Who are guys that we're going to be seeing coming out of that bullpen as this year moves along? Yeah, I, I think there's a there's some young guys in there. I think Timmerman is a guy um, that's going to get the ball pretty quickly. Um, he's probably been the most dominant arm we've had this spring, and um, if we have the luxury of keeping him in the pen, that would be great. Bringing him along as a freshman, and his mentality that he brings, um, he's he's on attack. I mean, he is he's growling out there at you, and uh, so you know we'd like to be able to keep him in that role. Um, you know, you've got. Tyner Horns, another freshman I think you're going to see uh, probably pretty early out of, out of the bullpen. Both those guys could start, you know. Um, so we just, you know, there's the back end guys that we've talked about too. Casey Dice will probably start. If we started tomorrow, um, you know, he's going to close for us, you know. So um, you got Borst, you got Perry, you got Rand Sanders, you got Kyle Fralick. You know, a lot of those guys that have saved games before as well. So. Like I said, if we if we can get off to a good start, avoid the crooked numbers early, we've got we've got some guys um, we feel like that we can kind of hand it off to that have that have fulfilled those roles at this level. I am fascinating to see how this lineup develops, just because with the losses of Max and Bryce, who steps into that role? I mean, they were a huge part of the production sure last year. So who steps up and and who delivers and new guys? It just. There's so much unknown about this baseball team. And that's kind of the way it is in this sport because of so much roster turnover. You have guys going to the draft early because both Max and Bryce could have come back. They were just juniors. But you go when you have leverage 
to go in and pro ball and say, well, I can go back to college unless you pay me top dollar. That's why so many, very few seniors make it that way. I think he's right. I think the bullpen's going to be a strength of this team. I think there's a lot of options for them moving forward. And to your point, he was asked, how do you replace that production that you got a year ago from Anderson and Matthews? Well, I'm not real comfortable replacing two guys that are hit 40 home runs, but, you know, I, I said it, you know, earlier, like, it, it's not going to be, you know, we're not going to say, hey, okay, these two guys are gone, these two guys step up to replace them. I mean, it would be great to think that that would happen, but it's, there's a reason that those guys are, you know, some of the best in school history. Um, it doesn't come around very often, so you're looking at more of a team-wide approach as, as to, you know, how are we going to replace that production? And again, are we going to hit 100 home runs? I don't really care as long as we score runs. I just, we're, we're going to have to find a way to get on base. I feel like we've got some high on base, low strikeout guys uh, on this team. Um, we've got a little more team speed. Um, and then we have some guys I think are, are going to emerge as more of power hitters um, than what they've maybe previously shown. So not real comfortable replacing those guys, but I, I am comfortable knowing that we have a lot of guys that are w willing to fulfill a role for the team. It's, I mean, you, you mentioned it, but that this is kind of the sport that you do have a lot of turnover. But when you have two guys like that coming back, you certainly feel really good about a lineup. But um, I was going to ask you early predictions on who might lead the team in home runs. This that's year. a great, I, that's a good one because I think, I think uh, Carey could, uh, he, he, Dylan Carey is the shortstop third baseman a year ago. He's got some pop. Josh Karen has shown the ability to hit the ball at the ballpark. But Gabe Swanson hit 18 last year. But he was kind of protected a little bit by Max and Bryce. So probably most people would say Gabe, and I'll probably go Gabe. But there's some other guys that have some thump in that lineup. Jessica, I think it was one of the more undertold stories of last year. Bryce and Max, two guys. Bryce went first round of the Astros. Max went second round to the Tigers. I mean, we don't have any other men's sports that have guys going in the draft that high. Those are two really high-quality players. The lack of some pitching on some midweeks is what kept that team from maybe really having a big postseason. And that's where you kind of become stars is when you get to postseason. Because how many lineups would kill to just have one oh, of those two? They had two and of then them. you have two that they just were so consistent and solid throughout an entire baseball season and just a nightmare for pitching staff. Because you you get through one of them and then oh, here comes another one right. that it's just boy, they and you know, then they had some other guys that, that really benefited from that lineup, as you just mentioned. So um, I, I'm, I'm fascinated to see how they, they quote unquote, replace that. Right. And you certainly don't want guys to think, oh, because that, remember, Bryce felt that when he, he was Swellenbach. He, he kind of felt the pressure of having to think that he had to be that. But so you certainly don't want guys to be, oh, you got to do what Bryce Matthews did, or right. oh, you got to do what Max Anderson did last year. But how do you replace that production, and, and who are the guys that step up, and maybe some young guys that, that uh, take a hold of that opportunity, too? I do think there are some freshmen. Uh, Sanderson is a young guy from Missouri who I think has got a real good bat. He could really surprise people as they move on. The chat room has been going crazy because it's gotten out that Will was asked about, are you naming captains? He said, no, I don't have a captain right now of this team. And we're going to play you a clip here in a minute about him talking about we have leaders, but we don't really have a guy I would say deserves to put the C on his chest yet. And I quickly told you, I go, remember football? Didn't Matt Rule didn't do captains because he picked a guy, different guys each week, right, during the football season. Yeah, he did. And um, I do believe we have that leadership clip ready. But, yeah, it's um – you know, if, if you're not ready, if a guy's not ready for that opportunity, don't give it to him yet. Right. And how, honestly, I mean, in baseball, how critical is cap is it having a captain? It's not that critical. I mean, you have to have your leaders, and yeah. the, those guys have to emerge. But in terms of just like, hey, you've got to have that C, I don't think it's one, I don't know if it's one of those sports that it's like, oh, oh, it's Agreed. not going to be a good year if you don't have those, those captains. Agreed. Here's the clip from the coach talking about, we have leaders, we just don't have somebody I'm ready to put the, the C on the jersey. Well, again, I don't know that you'll really know until the season starts. I mean, it's easy to be vocal when your name's getting in the, written in the lineup every day and you have a zero ERA. You know, it's easy to be vocal and, you know, care tremendously about the team. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how guys respond to that. Um, you know, obviously KP's a guy. Perry's been, been a captain before, and, and um, he's kind of learned the ins and outs of being a leader. Um, and, you know, some of the other guys have emerged too. I mean, I think Englund and... 
Cole Evans are guys that have showed up since school started and, and they've been nothing but, um, I mean, it reminds me a lot of kind of the veteran outfielders we had in 21. Acker, Haggy, Logan Foster, some of those guys who were uh, Jackson Hallmark, who are just really, really sold out to the team. So I um, think we've got some really good leaders. I think um, whether we put a label on them or not, we'll see. I mean, I, I think I'm kind of keeping an open mind as far as how we're going to do that um, this year. It's also, too, like if, if it's a big group, then that water it down a little bit if you give like eight C's away, totally captains. Agree. It's more so like a, a lead, a group leadership type of deal. A lot of times that works best for a team, and then you see how it goes. It, just because it works one way for one team doesn't mean that that's how it should be for the next team. And certainly Will Bolt has a, a good pulse on that. I love that answer. I think he's exactly right. You know, if somebody establishes by midseason, we could do it in April. Why, well, you don't have to do it right now. I think yeah. it's fine to do that. Uh, the, you, back to the pitching real quick, and somebody in the chat room mentioned it, and Will has told me this off the air. I said, you, you made some staff changes in the off season, made a move at the pitching coach. He goes, yeah, I've got the best pitching coach in America. Rob Childress, is, that's his, been his bailiwick when he was here as, a, as the pitching coach and as the longtime head coach at A&M. They had great pitching staffs roll through A&M, and now he's got control of that pitching staff. It's going to be interesting to see how they come together. How, and he's, he's really good at developing, too, right? That's Not just the, the piecing it together, but also just developing certain pitches yep. and with, with guys, whatever it might need, whatever they might be lacking in their repertoire. When, when he was here the first time around, he put about seven or eight pitchers in the big leagues. So did it here and did it big time at A&M. So having him as a pitching coach, I think, should get people pretty excited. All right, first game, 11 o'clock, Baylor, 1030 pregame on Friday from a gorgeous ballpark. The uh, ballpark in Arlington, Texas. The last game played there was the end of the World Series. Because the Rangers, they won, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, the Rangers won the World Series on that field. How good is this opportunity? I mean, that Shriners, it's, it's a always good, it's it, a good tournament. And then you've got the some some big time teams. Tennessee Texas there. Tech is ranked in the top yep. 25. Oklahoma's so have been to the World Series. Have, Baylor's always been pretty good. You have three non Big 12s, which is Nebraska, Tennessee, good program. Oregon was a Super Regional team last year. And then you've got Tech. You mentioned they've been to the World Series a handful of times. Oklahoma had that great run two years ago. I don't know where that – that came out of nowhere, really, for Oklahoma. Uh, but good program. And Baylor has struggled of late. But, yeah, it's – and there should be good crowds down there with those three Texas schools. So it should be a fun weekend. And I, there will be some Husker fans that will make their way down there to watch, uh, watch down there as well. All right, phone lines open for you. Let's get those open there, Duke. 402-413-2400. Or you can fire off a text. When we come back, talk a little wrestling. Got all that coming up here in just a moment. Our Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the keno parlor, is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Com. Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in-store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. 
It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Microvolt Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity, with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you a Tuesday night. Again, no show tomorrow. Husker women's basketballs that take on the Ohio State Buckeyes from the Ohio State University. That will be a 6 o'clock tip, 530 for pregame coverage. Matt and Jeff will have the call for that game for you tomorrow night. Want to give a tip of the cap to Ridge Lovett. Named today, and Duke had this in the ticker at the top of the hour, but the NCAA wrestler of the week, the 149er, 149 pounder is 20 and 0 this year, Jessica, 11 and 0 in duels. He knocked off a pretty good wrestler from Michigan and Austin Gomez last Friday night. That red shirt year, I think he got stronger. I think he grew up a little bit. I think he is going to be one tough out when they get to the NCAAs. Yeah, it was funny that wrestling uh, when they had Michigan. You and I were talking. Oh man, Ridge is like <laughs> liable to go off. I thought he was going to pin him. Yeah, um, I thought there was a really cool video. I, I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly, but there was a girl that's holding up like a sign with Ridge, and he ran over right after he he had got the win and, and gave her a hug. But yeah, he's on a he is on a mission, and we've said that from the start. It just looks like he is on a mission. And, and, you know, when I had him on the show back before the, the Christmas break, I had asked him about the decision to redshirt, and a lot of people thought it was for him to avoid Yanni, but that was not entirely true because he didn't redshirt. And he knew he, after he had gone through the NCAA and, and he had the runner-up, he knew that there were things 
in, in, in his wrestling that he needed to address, he needed to get better on, that he, you just can't do throughout the course of while you're still trying to compete and win. And he needed to address and become a better wrestler. And I, I just, I think he, boy, he attacked it. And as hard as it was for him, he's such a competitor to sit out. He really embraced that year. And I, I just think it's, it's paying up dividends. And now for him, I think it's national title or bust, you know, and, and I, he embraces that kind of those kinds of expectations. He's the number one wrestler in the country and, and that's what he wants. He wants to, that's where his ultimate goal is. And he wants people to expect that of him. He embraces that, but you know, you have to go on that run. You have to prove it. You have to get there. But I, I just, I think he's a better wrestler than even when he finished national runner up. And, and he just, he really took that year and, and made himself better for it. You want a great match. It's coming up Sunday. They go to Penn state Sunday afternoon. The Nittany Lions number one, Nebraska's up to three in the, in the uh, team poll that came out today. Penn State just took care of Iowa. This is a great challenge, and uh, but I like the Huskers to go win some matches in Happy Valley. That's gonna be, and I think Ridge will be one of them. But you're right. I mean, Yanni was a great wrestler from was it Cornell or Yale? Which one was he? Cornell, I think. Cornell. Was, Cornell is where he was, and he was a year or two older than Ridge. So Ridge decided to go ahead and redshirt, grow up, do all the things you just talked about. Now he's the 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 odds-on favorite to win his weight class. Uh, but this will be fun. If you love wrestling, you're going to want to tune in Sunday. Action at 3 o'clock on BTN, Nebraska at Penn State. And they sell it out. They, they draw so well for wrestling at Penn State. It's a big-time atmosphere. Absolutely. But I just, you know, as much as we talk about Ridge and certainly kudos to Peyton Rob. But how about some of those wrestlers that were the, that stepped up big, that Jacob Van D and some of those other guys that, don't always get talked about that have been yep. really big in that ranking and them moving up and they've got some big opportunities but you know also Silas Allred he's the Big Ten champion want to see him Pinto. you know some of these guys I, it's not just about individual national champions with this team they they have bigger goals in mind and you know they they want to win a Big Ten title they want to win a national title and so it's going to take all of those guys performing well and not just Ridge, and I think they've got a pretty pretty good bunch if they can start peaking at the right time. They do not have a lot of their season left. They've got the Penn State duel, then they duel with Arizona State, so they get out of conference the next Sunday, and then it's the Big Tens on uh, the 9th and 10th of March. So they have two duels left, and then a little downtime, and you need that little downtime to get your body right for the Big Tens because you have so many wrestling matches in a short amount of time at the Big Tens. That's why we're not sure can Nash, is Nash, is he, is he healthy enough to do that? Is he physically fit enough to do multiple matches in a couple of days? I don't know. And, and that's where that, the kind of the decision on, okay, you need all the team points you can get. The thing about the Big Ten championships, too, is a lot of those guys, remember when it was here and it, you see it every year, is that a lot of those guys are going to be who are wrestling for national titles. So you might see guys opt out. And so, Good. you know, but but it is kind of a puzzle piece on how you can rack up the points to maybe win team titles. And so I know that they're still probably weighing, I think that they're still weighing the decision on, on who fits best there at heavyweight. Um, I don't think this last week um, Nash didn't know for sure if he, well, was, he would. if he was going to be in that or not. But you know, if, if it is him, I think he'll embrace it. He'll he'll love the opportunity. If it's not him, I think he'll be um, happy for um, Harley. Is it Harley, Harley Andrews? Yeah, yeah, Harley to get that opportunity. But you know, he's done his job and and you know stepped in and. But uh, I, this is just a team that has the the potential to do some really big things. I, and I, I know Coach Manning believes that. It was so amazing that the Big Ten was here two years ago? Yeah. In PBA. And so many people, so many wrestlers opted out of the finals. And so people are like, I was really looking forward to that 149 match or whatever it was. And they're going, the kid opted out because they're all strategizing for the next round, which is the NCAA tournament. Yeah, because a lot of those guys are going to be facing off for, yeah. um, you know, the national title. So it was, you're, you're, you were seeing a lot of forfeits in that. So People were like, come on, I want to see that match. I believe Michigan ended up winning it. They did? I think, I think that you're year, right. Because Penn State and Iowa were both thinking about winning a national title instead of, uh, you know, a Big Ten title. I believe that was yeah. when it, I'm pretty sure it was Michigan. I think it was Michigan. I think you're right. We'll put uh, Cole on that assignment to dig that out from two years ago.
402-413-2400, the number to be a part of the program with a call or a text. That's our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back to wrap up tonight's show next. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! If you're an unconditional, wholehearted, and ever-so-loyal Husker fan, you deserve to pay like one everywhere you go. With the free f Husker Visa debit card. Fuel your fandom all season and beyond with a debit card just for you. It's free with any checking account from f the bank of Husker Nation. Get your free Husker Visa debit card at any branch or at f slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. All right, programming note, no show tomorrow. Husker women's basketball as they take on the Ohio State Buckeyes. We'll have the women's basketball show for you Thursday, hour one. Amy Williams will be in studio for that. And then Friday, a full two-hour show. I'm headed to Dallas for the baseball opener on Friday. I will not be a part of Thursday's show. I'll join Jessica for a bit on Friday's show. So that means I'm not going to be here for the joke Thursday Man, night. how are you going to make it? Needs a little bounce back. He normally does really well when you're gone. So I, That's what I'm hearing. I think if he bats like, you know, three to 400 overall, he bats about 900 when you're gone. Last week, you know, I thought, I really thought maybe the more I pondered that joke, the funnier it would get. Yeah, that wasn't the case. I just, I didn't and, get it until my dad explained it to me when I got home And it still wasn't that funny. So, it uh, went well over my head. No pressure on Cole, but, um, and, and uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's who the student is with him, because I think he bounces those off whoever's back there. So, I don't, was it, I don't know if it was Duke last week or what, but, so they may have failed him as much as anybody. Yeah, they better step up. You know, the intern of the year race, too. That, I know. That's going to play a factor into it. Yeah, is, it is. Is how they supported Cole and Joke of the Week. I looked at those standings the other day, and it might surprise you a little bit who's leading that intern of the year standing. Hmm. Who, who, who you got? <laughs> you, you're going to let us in on that? I don't want Duke to hear, hear it. So. Oh, okay. Uh, Crypto King... Crypto King said that Cole's <laughs> jokes are overall batting 700. So he's, he's like 7 out of your 10. That's a high rate maybe it's accurate i mean what what do we think is 
you know, a, a, a hit? Like, is, is getting a six or a seven a hit? Yeah, probably. Anything above then, a five. Then he's probably maybe yeah. about 500. That's probably right. We have some really good graders that text in. Carl is a good grader of what Cole does. Um, How much do you think, though, they're fans of Cole as opposed to his jokes? Well, I think that factors into your grade. Yeah. If you really like Cole, you give him, you bump him up a spot or two. Yeah. So what does that say about you when you, you kind of are a harsh grader? Well, I am a tough grader. <laughs> I'm a, I, I got a great set. When he does it, when he hits it good, I love it. So you, you just, you expect more. You have high expectations. You just, you know, tough yeah. love. You, you want to push him. That's right. He's back. You're going to start missing a lot of those. He's jokes. back there giggling right now. I mean, Love are it. we going to give him an off season or not? He's he, well. He's it. had enough miss weeks that he's that. That's where the off season pops into. Because I like Nick. The this Thursday he's got one. The next Thursday he does not. He does not have one the following Thursday. So you better get this one right because you're going to have like two three weeks off. Yeah, you don't want to go into the bye weeks with a bad taste and in your mouth. Depending on where we are in the Big Ten tournament for the men and the women, because those will be on Thursdays, whether we play in the afternoon or night, he may or may not have jokes. For those weeks. An NCAA tournament? NCAA tournament, same deal. Do we play in the day or we play at night? So, no pressure on, on that moving forward. T let's go back to where we started the show. Really tough news today for Jordy Ball. She put out a social post that she injured her ACL in the opening game of the year last week. Will not play this year. She'll start the rehab process, go through all that. Says she'll be good and ready to go for 2025. Loved her post. Loved how she put it into perspective. And knowing the type of person she is, she will come back better than ever. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I just love the way she handled it um, just from the start because they just probably, she probably had a feeling that it wasn't good. But the way that she was there for her teammates all throughout last weekend and you know, it was just the biggest cheerleader, the biggest supporter. I think you'll see more of that. And as I said earlier, this is still a really good softball team. They've got some really great talent. I mean, you're, you're watching history in the making with Billy Andrews. And when with all this talk about records being broken with the extra year, Billy doesn't get the extra year. True. Billy was the freshman, was part of the freshman class that came in that didn't get the extra COVID year. Right. So she very likely, um, I think she's, gosh, I think she was 11 away from the home run record and she hit two over the weekend. Yeah. So you're talking about someone that's going to be on the top of the record books uh, more than likely this season. Um, Brooke Andrews, what she said, there's just, there's still a lot of good talent that have done a lot of big things with this softball program and you, you, you still have some depth at pitching. Is, are they Jordy Ball? No, but you never know what, what, how people might step into the opportunity. It's still a really good softball team. And so, um, you know, and I, I think Jordy would be the first to tell you that. Get out and support them. And, and just because she's hurt doesn't mean all is lost for this year. They, I think they'll rally, and, and certainly it was a shock to the system, but I think they'll, they'll rally and they'll come together. Kaylin Kinney was out most of last year. She's back healthy. She's going to have to pick up some innings. Sarah Harness is going to pitch well. She pitched pretty well last year for Nebraska, being the number two behind Courtney Wallace. So you're right. There's other options for them to go to, and those two young ladies just kind of step up. It's kind of what sports is. Next man up mentality. We hear it all the time from whether it's Matt Rural all through all of our coaches. When somebody goes down, somebody else has just got to step up and get your opportunity and grab it and take it. Yeah, and a lot of times they had to out hit people anyways. I mean, you know, right. they, they've got a good lineup that they can they can match with. They were, I think, the top of the league last year in, in um, you know, batting average and as a team. So, uh, shoot, they can hit with anybody in the league, I think. Let's give everybody a little tease on the way out. You had a great interview today that you're going to get posted with the Alex Rebecca, volleyball player, Josiah, the basketball player. Oh, it's player. fantastic. Yeah, look for that on Thursday. We've got Husker Women's Wednesday tomorrow with Gina Jorgensen, a star swimmer. So got some great content coming out over the next couple of days. Dry says his joke of the week is don't be a Lisa. All right, that'll put a wrap on tonight's show. Thanks to Duke and Nicole and to all of you for being a part of this program tonight. Basketball tomorrow. Jessica will join you again on Thursday night. Have a great evening. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate.